Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. We're going to spend some time talking about what the uh, the average person in America does during COVID-19 sanctions and sequestering. We're going to talk with none other than the insane Daryl Wayne. And Daryl, uh, I miss you. It's uh, It's been four weeks now. Yeah, it's uh, a little absurd as far as, um, you know, what we can do and what you can't do these days. It changes daily. It is. When you when you and Sherry go out uh, to the market, for example, are you wearing uh, gloves and a mask? Uh, a mask. Uh, as far as gloves, we really don't, you know, we're not touchy people of, of other things when we're out. Well, yeah, but you're touching uh, like a shopping cart. Well, yeah, you but they have break- things to wipe that down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I uh, one market I went to last week. Um, I'm trying to think of how they did it. They uh, they, they said take a, a basket from there, and I did, and it was wet. I did have gloves on, and um, and then I went and I did my shopping, and then Trader Joe's. Uh, it was basically the same thing. Uh, and one of them was giving out masks. Well, I've actually invented a uh, shopping cart uh, car wash. Oh, yeah? yeah? Oh, good. You put them in one end and they go through the sanitization process and all that and come out sparkling clean on the other. Oh, but, that's uh, good. Yeah, I haven't made one yet. So. Oh, okay. Looking for investors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you going a little stir crazy? Because I mean, of spending time with, uh, you know, first of all, I, I generally work out of my house anyway. Uh, you know, so my quote unquote job is, uh, you know, sitting in front of a radio console here at the house. So not that much has changed except, you know, I usually went outside for, you know, lunchtime meal. At this point, I'm eating out of the refrigerator, which is a, a change. And, uh, you know, aside from that, uh, no, not really. I mean, there are some, uh, Places that I used to go of a convenience that are not open at the moment. That's uh, a little disturbing, and I don't know when that's going to change. So you just have to grin and bear it, I guess. I guess. Uh, I I work, as you do, out of the house, but I also go out and do video production, which I'm not doing. I am allowed to do it, my understanding. It's media, but I haven't done it for a number of reasons. Um well, at some, at some point, I figured they'd get to sort out the essential media versus the non-essential media. Well, I've been noticing commercials, and these look like they're new commercials. Brand new, beautiful. Brand new. When when beautiful. we get back to life, yeah. Yeah. When things return to normal, we'll still be here. Those right. Those kind of uh, things, yeah. yeah. And so somebody is producing those, and they could be in the house or in an in a studio someplace but i i question whether or not it is essential and it it probably isn't i uh, i've been producing some commercials but i've been using older footage or footage that's already been been shot and just adding new voiceover to it yeah what disturbs me is you know uh, here in los angeles we have a couple of local channels and most of the aside from the two anchors which they have probably about 10 feet apart everybody else the sports guy and the economy guy and the right are all weather guy are all doing the things from their home with assorted uh, semblance of quality uh, some of them are are poorly lit uh, they're using the the microphone inside their laptop uh, and it's echoey and awful. And then others are well lit, polished, lavalier, you know. So, yeah. Uh, and, and Saturday Night Live this last week did it from home, and all the the players from home, eight or nine connections, and every one of them the quality was different, right? <clears throat> if you're ABC, if you're NBC, why can't you send you know people out to each of those locations to make sure that everything's clean and right and is perfect as you could get it as far as audio and video unless they just want it to look funky to say uh, this obviously is from his house and not in the studio i saw one of them and i don't remember which one i could see the the prompter set up and the uh and lights right. but again and i don't remember if it was four or seven that i was watching at the time but i watched a video uh internet 
only show late Saturday night. It was called the Saturday Night Seder um, during the, the Passover, which is still going on as we record this. And what's so interesting to me is that they had oh Deborah Messen, uh, Messenger Messinger Messinger Messer Messer and um, uh, another another guy uh, Deborah's had a a slight stutter in the video the other guy and I can't think of his name is more of a Broadway actor though he he shows up his character uh, parts all over. It looked like he was really having a tech issue. I mean, his face was red, and it would go to blue, and 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 um, it wasn't intentional. And the audio was 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 questionable. But it was such a well put together show. They actually had band members in different locations, okay, and they were playing together. They all had a headset on one ear so that they could hear the music and then the singers would sing it was it, it was truly an amazing uh, 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 show and it was about an hour Jason Alexander did it from his house and it was uh, it was mesmerizing Jimmy Kimmel on, on Friday night I think had a, a band playing uh, via Zoom or Skype or whatever they they're using, and uh, it sounded from a timing perspective, it sounded pretty good. You know, I mean, when uh, we do audio feeds back and forth because we're going from you know audio to digital, digital to analog, analog to digital, back to audio, um, you know, there could be a little bit of a delay. But for them uh, singing together, it didn't sound like it was a delay. It sounded like everybody was in unison. So that's uh, interesting yeah, I, how they the, must the have same. done that. Yeah. Yeah, I I was wondering too because they were uh, they were singing uh, to this band off to the side or maybe to some tracks that had been recorded, but it was really well done um, and it was a lot of fun. We uh, we were watching something and I got this text and I figured what the heck and we started to watch it. It was it was wonderful. Any other ramifications in the uh, um, insane Daryl Wayne household from COVID nineteen. No, everything's you know pretty st- straightforward. I, I'm not really a conformist, and it took me a, a, a bit of time to uh, adjust to putting a, a mask on if I do go out. But you know, around the house uh, uh, during the day, house and studio, I'm the only one here, so everything's groovy. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It's groovy. I have a I have a problem with wearing the masks. Because they're not comfortable. None of them. Right? None yeah. of them. Well, actually, uh, my wife's been making uh, some, and she had a prototype, and prototype one, two, three, and then two or three ones that she made, uh, one of them out of a, you know, a cotton material, one of them out of a denim piece of material. You know, to me, they're, 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 they're hot, they're cumbersome. You know, the last thing in the world I want to breathe is my own breath coming back at me. And, uh, you know, so my solution is to not leave the house. Right. Well, my uh, wearing the mask, my glasses fog up. Yeah, that's a, certainly a, uh, an issue. And the other thing that happens is um, I keep, I, you know, I don't normally touch my face, but all I'm adjusting the mask. So it, it does bother me. Well, we've uh, had the opportunity of spending some time with the insane Daryl Wayne here at Late Night Health, finding out how the average American is putting up with staying at home. Uh, as I said, it's been five weeks since I've been in studio. Five It's been weeks. a while, yeah. It's been a while. So I miss you. Same back at you, man. You know, uh, the, little, uh, the little hugs that we never do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, Mark the hand, handshaking is gone forever, they say, at and this point. Absolutely. Finally, after centuries, yeah. thousands of years. Uh, I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We're going to take some time out. We'll be back. Don't go away. As Late Night Health continues, join us at LateNightHealth.com.
If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents, or just have fun. Find out about the advertising opportunities with Late Night Health. Call us at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at latenighthealth.com. That's info at latenighthealth.com. Join Late Night Health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care. Call now at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthere.com. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at ServetteHassan.com. Late Night Health continues with our regular contributor, Robert Clancy. He is the author of Guide to the Soul, author of The Messenger, and uh, has a great website at guidetothesoul.com. Robert's going to talk to us today about possibilities, even in these trying times of COVID-19. Robert, do you have an inspirational thought for us? Yeah, the uh, inspirational thought on possibilities is the achievable only becomes possible when you commit your entire mind, body, and soul or your spirit to it. And I found time and time again, and I had this thought that there's really nothing that is not possible. You know, it's all possible. And, uh, you know, that's the key to life is that, um, you know, understanding that anything is achievable and when you put that out there, uh, really, you don't have any limits. There's no limit at all? There is no limit at all in life. And, you know, if you think about it, they put a you know person on the moon, they have, uh, um, you know, and they thought that was impossible for how many years have pe- people have been on this planet? And once that was achievable, and you know that uh, there's also... You know, they're planning on going to Mars and beyond. It is possible once you figure out a way, and they're working on that technology, they're working on that. But once, you know, I look at the, you know, you think about the, uh, how, how long it took somebody to run a mile, right, back in the day. And mm-hmm. then somebody broke that barrier that they thought was not breakable. And now everyone can do that, correct? All of a sudden, it's just, that's that's not even a, a thought that you have to break the mile, you know, and right. run in exactly. under a certain time. Well, think about the possibilities even 30 years ago uh, of what we're doing now. You're in upstate New York. Daryl is in Ventura, and I'm in another part of Ventura. It's amazing. The technology is amazing, the possibilities regarding that. What about the possibilities of people, though? 
during this time? Well, that that comes into play with the mind, body, and soul. So you have, you know, everyone sort of, uh, you know, sheltering or whatever's going on there, where depending on where you are. And uh, I found that most people are are achieving things that they're they weren't able to do. You know, their houses are getting cleaned and organized. They have more time to reach out to others and and communicate. And I I heard from somebody else. They said I've been living in this you know complex for five years. I just met my neighbors, and what they do is they communicate by tapping pots and pans on the walls at a certain time just to say, we're all here, we're all alive. Why is it that, we, you know, isn't that interesting that we don't know our neighbors anymore, many of us? But maybe, you know, this, this, with the virus, it's really, you know, this pandemic is allowing people to connect on a different level, and it's allowing, you know, as you said, with technology, you're, you're finding elderly people now are using FaceTime for the first time and communicating through video chat because they need to. And I've been reaching out to people that are, are sheltered alone, and, you know, we're really communicating, getting to know each other, and it, it's, uh, I don't know if I'd have that opportunity because I'd have all these other distractions in the way and they would not be able to have the time to do that. With... People are social animals, okay? I mean, we're, 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 we're almost like, we're like a pack. We like to be in groups. This is just uh, causing, I think, some, some, some craziness in terms of, you know, going stir crazy. And the On one possib- level, yeah, you know, if you think about it, it is, yeah, and we're like that. But you know what? I found that people are still finding ways to group up and uh, virtually or through conversation and these uh, amazing phone calls I've had or just or, or chats on FaceTime or through Zoom or any of these other technologies that we have. And uh, I've actually connected more deeply with people during this than I probably would have otherwise. Um. How have you been staying in touch with people? Using technology primarily? Yeah, there's everything from uh, you know, instant messenger. You've got uh, text messages uh, to you know, just a phone call, just touch and base throughout the day. Uh, even, you know, I go out for a walk and I'm able to, in, in my area, because it's, uh, we're, we're still able to go out and you know, get outside and I, I try to do some exercise. I'm starting to see the same people out and it's a three and a half mile walk on this country uh, area it's like a, a open area there's not a lot of houses on that but there's people walking dogs and stuff and uh, you know we kind of have a system you have to be you know if you're facing traffic that's the one way and the other way is the other way you know for social distancing and things but everybody's smiling and we all wave to each other and say hi or, or sometimes it'll be like a little joke as we pass you know or something like that but that's another way to socialize and you know kind of getting to know the people with that you know in some way that they see about there every day uh, I've noticed uh, uh, Carol and I went for a walk a short walk yesterday afternoon and people are friendly they really are uh, you know they wave to you they say hi I think they want to come up and really hug everybody, but we, you know, we're staying six to 10 feet away at least. And um, I think that that's, um, I think that's good. I mean, we're not stopping yeah, and, and, and talking. And experiencing exactly the same thing here. You know, I'm passing people and there's a smile on their face and they wave. And I think people are just striving, you know, just really for some kind of contact, any kind of social thing. You don't realize how much you took that for granted that you not have it. So that's going to be one of the changes that comes out of this. It's one of the silver linings that, that's occurring that people are are just thinking and, you know, how precious that kind of interaction is. In, in the past, have you ever experienced anything at all like this where where people stay away from each other like this? No. No, I don't think this has happened in, in years and years. The last time was probably the turn of the century, and, you know, most of the people uh, from that era are gone, or, you know, they were very young during that. So, you know, we really, it, it does come. You have to learn from history. This is going to be one of those marks that, that we're going to have, and how, you know, luckily we do have this technology where we can connect, and you know, maybe, you know, as far as... Uh, People were socially isolated through the technology, and now they're 
doing it in a different way that they're actually able to connect with it. So maybe it'll change that paradigm. And 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 looking at the future, do you think that we're going to stay more connected through technology, or will we go back to you know one-on-one meetings? I think you're going to see a hybrid of that, definitely, because uh, after this, I, I know you just want to talk to people, you know, just even going to the store or talking to the cashier now, you know, it's like there's another person you can you know, interact with. It's, you know, and I definitely getting a little bit of the cabin fever, but, uh, you know, there's, you have family, we can reach out and uh, friends and those things. And it's really, I think, strengthening a lot of that, uh, those bonds that we have. Do you uh, do, do your markets have uh, the plexiglass uh, uh, between the cashier and? Yes, yeah, so I'm in, I'm in upstate New York, so it's not uh, you know the national news is really framing New York that it's like totally you know a virus den here, but uh, that's mostly in the city and the five boroughs down there. Where I am in upstate New York, the cases are a few and far between, so we're very lucky that that that's the case here. But yeah, they do have that plexiglass, and we are all using social distancing, masks, gloves, the whole thing. What's uh, getting to me is uh, the fact that there are uh, every every um, every time I go to the market, they they move the the marks. You don't know exactly where to stand. At Trader Joe's, right. they had a box this week. <laughs> Uh, and last week they didn't. Uh, Robert, as always, thank you for your insights. Robert Clancy, the author of The Messenger and also Guide to the Soul. You can find him at GuideToTheSoul.com. You can find us at LateNightHealth.com, Facebook.com slash LateNightHealthRadio, and, of course, uh, Apple. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and many, many more. I'm Mark Allen. I say this every week. Have a good week, everybody. Have a great week. And most importantly, have a healthy week. Stay safe. Thanks, Daryl. We'll see you next time. Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. Welcome to Guide to the Soul. This is Robert Clancy. You are a beautiful masterpiece of celestial art. God sculpted your body, painted your portrait, and forged your blessed soul from the stardust. As with any masterwork, you may weather with age or get damaged a bit along the way. But doesn't that add to your beauty and mystique? Don't ever change who you are. You're loved and cherished in heaven just the way you are. Of all the challenges you've faced in life, you can be only made better for them. The greatest masterworks on earth have all been ravaged by the tests of time, only to become more revered in their inherent beauty. Always know you're one of God's masterworks meant to shine in that same way. For more inspiration from Robert Clancy, visit GuideToTheSoul.com or go to the Moments with Robert page on LateNightHealth.com. 